What's up? I'm Bam Marger, and I'm not trying to say nothing or nothing. I'm just simply trying to say, welcome to Castle Bam. You're in Bam world now. I'm here with the Derns. Today, we're going to be walking around showing you all the history that happened here. What is this? Bam Marger, what will he do next? Whatever the f I want. When I moved in, they have a baker's dozen of new rules all because of me. The township's going to be here any second to complain again. No more upside down cars in the driveway. Get stuff in there, man! No more Civil War reenactments. No more zip lines to treat the top casinos. The list goes on. What was your first impression of your house when you saw it? First time. 14 acres of land. I'm, this is the one. I'm buying it. I didn't even get time to think about it because it was already bought and there's 40 people there, 20 people to film, the other 20 to be on the set, like Raytheon, DiCamello, Chris Rabb, Ryan Dunn, et cetera. And it, it instantly became a movie set and it never felt like home. Like the kitchen area was called the Pirate Bar. Slayer played the first day we had the grand opening of the house. So there was thousands of people from the Westchester University there that I didn't even know. You know, when we were moving in, we were playing baseball in there and just breaking the windows. So I, I never really treated it like home until the whole Viva La Bam thing came to an end. Hey guys. Tim Glom here. You may remember me from Viva La Bam. Used to build a lot of for Bam. Uh, I've known Bam since like he's nine years old though. And we're at his house. We're gonna walk through some yeah. of the stuff that we did here. Oh, there's a funny story about this house, by the way. So Bam's in Europe avoiding his girlfriend. He calls me and he says, hey man, I I'm ready to buy a real house. Let's go buy a house. And I had a realtor friend and I said, cool, I'll go looking for you. So April and I drove around all over Delco and into Chester County. And I found this place and it had like horses. It was a, a woman's horse farm. Oh my God, is that a horse in the house? And she loved it. And she took great care of it if you were into horses. And I said, bam, I called him back and I said, I found the house. So it was a little over a million dollars at the time. Uh, my buddy found it. We brokered the deal with the broker. Uh, he wasn't even around and he never even saw it. And Phil had power of attorney at the time, I think, and Phil basically went into the contract. So I found this house and just explained it to Bam. There was no FaceTime or anything back then. We had to like send some pictures, you know, JPEGs. We're at your front well, gate. That's correct. We are. You know, the gate code changes quite often. Kids, his code is <laughs> I've been living here for nearly 20 years now, and there will be some eras of, you know, a year that I would just leave the gate open, you come in with a six pack, you can party all day, whatever, and skate, do whatever you want. But I'm 44 now, so it's a different day and age. A lot of things change. We just had some dude from Portland here. He's like, yo, Bam, I drove from Portland. You, you want to kick it? I'm like, do I know you? No, I just want to get out. <laughs> so at Castle Bam, you're going to see a lot of like that dinosaur there, behind it is a giraffe, and then you got the lion over there with an elephant that we accidentally lit on fire last night. Poor elephant. What'd he do? Absolutely nothing. Oh, man. Poor elephant. They're all from Jackass 1 when we filmed the golf cart thing where, uh, Ryan Dunn flipped over in Knoxville and got a concussion. I have bad you news okay? written all over you all right? So these are all the souvenirs from the Jackass 1 golf thing. I kept them all. And if you see the gorilla, there's a hole in his and I always wondered why that was there. I see my uncle mowing my lawn, and then he goes in the grill. That's where he hides his stash for PCP. <laughs> why does he do it? Because this is 14 acres, and when he starts there mowing, and then he finally finishes, the grass is already high over there, so he's constantly mowing to the point where he's like, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I built a ramp in Bam's backyard back the original house, April and Phil bought, that they grew up in. And then I moved the ramp 
from the old house here in the backyard. For one of the Viva La Bam episodes, he was inviting Danny Way out, and he wanted Danny to be able to do something big. Now, it was only an eight-foot tranny, you know, mini ramp. You've seen it. It was in all the CKY videos. But we built, like, yeah, I want to say it was, like, 70-foot-long crook ledge uh, with just, like, a four-foot walkway. Right there, that wasn't built yet. So we had a long box. Thank that I was playing on nose grind or crooked grind and the whole thing. And I flew in Danny Way, Colin McKay, Chris Markovich. And then I finally got a crooked grind, which took me a long time to do. But once I locked it in. Very long crooked grind. I thought at the time it could have been Guinness Book or World Records, but now when I see uh, <laughs> Brandon Burley, oh, Brandon Burley yeah, yeah. just shows up to the barracks on that long ledge that I could never imagine anybody to even make it from one end to the other. He just hauls ass and crooked grinds the whole thing. I'm like, yup, he definitely beat me on my crooked grind there. <laughs> Let's get a car up there. But then I put a car, one of our crushed cars, on a giant great all lift over the back of the ramp, and we convinced Danny to like do a front side air to 50-50 grab and, and back in. We actually went to Fairman Skate Shop, which is closed now, RIP, 40 plus years in business. And uh, he needed to get knee pads because it wasn't that he was gonna fall. Danny was skating such huge shit at the time. This is when mega ramps were like really the hot rage. He just did not like eight foot trannies. They were too small. He's like, nah, dude, if it's not like 15 foot tranny, it's tough. Great day. But yeah, that ledge was, was fun. This was an idea when we were filming Viva La Bam. Let's start making like six foot transitions. Snake run driveway. Look at it, it's the shape of a snake. Had dudes build these bricks all over the place. Very uneven, but good for skateboarding. Snake run driveway, yeah, it was a cool concept. I wasn't so sure we could pull it off, but it is giant. I forget how long it is, but I want to say it's like over 250 feet long. We all grew up skating the Brooklyn Banks. So Bam was like, yo, yo, let's get the Brooklyn Banks back. I wanted to do a wet lay, which means like in concrete. Um, we opted not to do that for a lot of different reasons, cost and just like labor. Record your message. Work coach, it's Tim and Bam Bam and we're calling for money. Every time you see Tim Glom's number, just think we need money. <laughs> we have the potential for an FDR in the driveway and uh, audio just ponied up six grand. So now we gotta find out who the bigger sponsor is. Ooh. You're gonna have to pony up to eight, bro. I can't believe we're here. This is probably 20 years later, if not 19 years later, they're still here. He doesn't weeded, but they're <laughs> still here. I mean, they still hold their shape. We put a lot of stone behind there. I didn't think about how, you know, plants would grow right through it. So, you know, weed killer, all that sh every week. April freaked the f out when she saw the bobcats and everything coming in but um yeah they're still here man i mean everybody's been here on these too all the old schoolers that hit the brooklyn bank mike v you know, all the cast characters mike v. Hey. Hey. how are you good, good. how are you good. i like the bullnose coping bam was was not into that he wanted pipe he wanted steel he was young back then <laughs> he was kind of a p he liked to be able to like grind. It was like, no, nah, you got to push into it. So bullnose at the top, they're still here. They were fun to build. It took us maybe like a week to build them. Yeah, was the bricks a pain in the ass to lay down or? Yeah, so the problem with like dry lay brick is it's just on sand. So you got a lot of stone back there. We had to do a little bit of drainage so they didn't fall in. And then you got to lay stone. And I mean, you can kind of see, they kind of lose their shape over years. Things just settle, you know, rainwater, everything. I can't believe how tight they are still today though. Dry laying brick is, you know, it's been around forever. You just gotta get them nice and tight. You gotta get your base really smooth and clearly 20 years later, still skatable. This is perfect. This used to be a nice neighborhood. Now look at it. It's like the Hell's Angels. Team. Wasn't there a ramp there at one point? Yeah, right here there was a little launch thing here and then there. It... That, was radical. that was only here for like a week just to film a Viva La Bam episode. Oh, gotcha with Danny Way and the crew. When you get to the concrete part of the skate park driveway, Bruce Martin, legend, one of the best, brought him and his son and a couple of cronies from Skatopia out and said, we're laying Crete at BAMS, get up here. Uh, we worked 7 a.m. till 10 p.m. at night, drank a lot of beers, laid a lot of concrete, and we just kind of freeformed it. We went for it. You remember any gnarly tricks that have gone down on the driveway over the years? 
Well, when Kanan was here last time, he was skating all day. It's finally midnight and he goes and kicks it there for a minute. And then sure enough, at 2 a.m., the lights go up. I'm like, he's back for more. 5 out of fakie, right here. One time I was skinny Vinny, I set up a picnic table and launched out 50-50 yank it back in. Sick. I tail drop from there. We had a little okay. fire flame thing going on right here. What about the back, Brandon? And man, I can't tell you how many pictures have been taken here in videos. Everybody jumped over the gorillas, all the animals, everything. This dude, Newport Joe, he came down here, tried to air on a bicycle with no shoes on. I think he was on one, but he tried to air over the kangaroo. Oh, slow down, slow down. He shack wackled his fucking Dylan. <laughs> we also set up the picnic table up here. I did like Gab knows one. 180, switch 50, alley-oop grind. What'd you do over the car? Oh, I did melon, alley-oop, 180. Also smithed off the picnic table up there. Sickest thing right here. Nick Dompierre, highest backside flip. Wow. Let's see that. <laughs> Back three kickflip, Sam Miller 69 from Indiana. Pretty impressive, and then front side flip, Ed Duff. Yeah! <laughs> Nolly Pop show it when I had that two day old festival which had 2,000 people here. Everybody had a good time, but this one drunk motherfucker fell from the top beam. Yeah. Straight down into the crowd, super gnarly. This was like a two day old idea. I'm like, everybody in the greater Philadelphia area, I'm opening the gate. I'm having a rock concert with Valiant Thor, Beanie Siegel, and Freeway. Come on in, it starts at 10, let's start stretching. So I look out the window, I'm like, oh my God, every car is parked everywhere. People are already shredding the out of it. You guys did like a demolition derby. Yeah, we've had a demolition derby. Everybody's just skidding around doing donuts. And I happened to open the door at the time that somebody's fishtailing right at me and ripped the door completely off the hinges. Stuck on a log, I need to get out. <laughs> if I was like one more foot out, would have been my leg. He was in a car and didn't know where I was and he was going to get out the passenger door. He Ooh. literally kicks the door open and I'm about to ram him and I took the door off. We were freaked wow. out for like two days. Two days we were like, Dude, that could have been it. That could have been like the end. He didn't know. I mean, there's, you know, stupid, stupid days. A ramp very similar to that one I built right here for yeah. skateboarding. No. Hello, I'd like to introduce to you Viva La Log. He's my stunt double and he's taken over the show. I bought eight cars from the junkyard that still ran. <laughs> Just so I could put bricks on the gas pedal and aim it and take bets on if it would launch over. So the first car, it, it had a slight right turn. It was in neutral and we were holding the car. I reached in and dropped it into drive and it was a front wheel car drive. And as soon as it clicked into gear, it was perfectly lined up for the ramp. As soon as it kicked in the gear, it spun out and it went slightly, went ah! and it, the ramp was here and it just went off the side. So I knew it wasn't gonna clear. All right, let's try it again. We got another car. <laughs> Which had paint in there and my ex-girlfriend's clothes. So she comes over to get him. She's like, oh, thanks for pouring paint all over my stuff. I'm like, no, it was really an accident. I swear to God, I was putting bricks on the car pedals and was trying to launch them over the driveway. She's like, you expect me to believe I'm like, come over and see the ramp. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I meant no harm. Looks like I have a three car garage now. Oh, easily. I gotta put another one in there. April was pissed because she had gotten brand new white rugs for the house 
and they were waiting to be installed and a bunch of paint for the house knocked all the paint shelves down on all the new carpet. Wow. I wasted like 10 grand in new carpet with the first jump. It was a genuine accident, I swear. <laughs> That's also when Adam Walkavich took probably the best picture ever of a car doing a back smith <laughs> down the back of the uh, garage. What's up with the uh, holes? Didn't in Viva La Bam, you put like stuff in there, right there? Yeah, so when I went to Hollywood, we wanted to have some souvenirs from, from famous people. We just got Tommy Lee's snare drum. And drumstick. Dave Grohl's belt. Dude, Dave Grohl is right over there. <laughs> Little skateboard piece. <laughs> Signed pair of Converse from Snoop Dogg. This is a guide on how to be a playboy. A little black book. I'm taking that. I think that's it. Didn't you have like Adam Sandler's golf balls? That's what I had. That was the fourth one. Yeah. Yeah. The Adam Sandler's golf balls. What happened to that stuff? The rain got in. It got. F but believe it or not, not many people have f with too much over here. But Danny Way aired um, off that thing into the bank. Yeah, Melon Alley up there, 60. Oh, wow. I remember when I built this, bam, she's like, oh, I don't like that tight shit, I don't want it real cranky. I'm like, dude, 250 feet of whatever you got, you gotta have at least one narwhal. That, I believe, is a three foot tranny. When we brought out Danny Way, a Colin McKay came. They all came in a helicopter, landed in the backyard, it was a whole nother story. Couldn't get the helicopter out of here for like 10 days. But Colin McKay showed up and I said, yeah, you think anybody could invert that? And he goes, let me check, and I, I swear. He comes across, and then his first trick on it, he did a backside air, it was probably like three feet out on that thing. Jeez. And just landed like it was nothing, rolled away, and he's like, invert, be a little tight. Maybe like invert, revert, and I was like, did you just after grab a backside air three feet on this thing? Colin McKay did a back tail to revert, pretty sick. Colin, man, vert, I mean, big tranny, small tranny, the guy was a maniac. I 540'd this quarter pipe, too. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm serious. How the f do you do it? I, it was really hard. I, I, of I, course I, it is. Look how steep it is. Yeah, I don't even want to fake you rock it. I'm surprised I did that. All right, right now, go. I can't do it. <laughs> right now, McTwist, go. <laughs> oh! It's still standing. I love it. But you know what? There's also been a lot of quad jumps and shit. Yeah, this is where you usually jump right here. <laughs> yeah, I launched a Hummer off this. Four wheelers everywhere, dirt bikes everywhere. People flipping quads left and right. Is what sucks is when you flip it, it could cost a grand or even more, and uh, nobody has that kind of money. So I have a graveyard of five four wheelers down there that simply doesn't work anymore. Kerry Getz bought a quad, was so obsessed with it that he kept going bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> At the end, he's built such a big ramp that launched over my limousine up to there. I think he got too brave for himself, so he sold the thing and put it away. He kept going bigger and bigger and bigger until I guess he reached his limit. Curry! Yo! We're doing a, a documentary about Castle Bam. We wanted to talk about a few things you did. You've kick flipped over the fucking Mercy Alago, right? Correct. You had a little maniac run with your four wheeler, airing over limousines and shit. Yeah. And then you have front side flips on lockdown. So, you, of course, the big steep roll in, you did it on that. Wait, I did the Rocky on you when you kick flipped, correct? <laughs> <laughs> we gotta yeah. find that footage. We have to find that footage. I have it. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. send it. Well, then show clip now. <laughs> Travis Pastrana showed up here for Nitro Circus.
Jackson. They were Aaron off the, the barn there over the whole pool into the bank. What? Yeah. I was like, you, you're going to do that? He's like, yeah. like, nothing. He's like, yeah, I'll, hell yeah. What do you mean? I'm like, all right. They tied a rope to one of their motorcycles. I was in one of these little toy cars. I told them to go faster the second time, and boy, they did. Let's go real fast this time. Like, ridiculously fast. I hit the side, and you could see my hip just clip the edge of the bricks. You know, when you think of a definition of a hipper, I was out for a couple weeks for that. I know about you, but I call that a success. That was very, my was black and blue, purple. <laughs> he said go. I don't know if he knows what that means in our world. He said go good. I think another gnarly clip from that episode, you jump from the top of your roll and in, into your ramp. Yeah. <laughs> So one day I looked at the garage roof and realized it had a transition on it. Well, it was just a you know 45 degree angle and I tried to drop in on it. But I think it was February and my feet were stinging so hard in the cold I had to call it quits. You jumped off the hobbit hole into a giant cake. Good, 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 good. What? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Kanan wakes up at 10 a.m. and he's just staring at it. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I want to go in off that. I'm like, oh yeah, well, that's pretty gnarly. When do you want to do it? He's like, what do you mean, right now? I'm like, now? Yeah! 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 yeah. You didn't even eat breakfast yet. You're just, okay. Yeah, we've had a lot of the recording studio down there. <laughs> Danko Jones done some tracks with uh, Clutch, Rain City Drive, band called Slaves, CKY of course, a whole lot of bands. Where that piece of wood is was once Don Vito's car. There's a car parked right here, dude. That's Vito's. What am I supposed to do? Cement it in so we can kick flip it. If you ever watch Viva La Bam, we crushed the shit. I think I killed 20 of Vito's cars. I can't carry that truck. Where are you busting stuff? Get your ride home. So one day Bam had an idea that's in the skate park. He's like, yo, man, I want something to jump over. I want a, you know, a kick flip mound. So this was it. Vito was pissed as usual. Actually, it's still in there. <laughs> yeah, it is. You can see it on the side over yeah. here. Vito, take a look at your car. Where? Look out the door. It wasn't me. I'm tired of getting new cars, man. There's Don Vito's car. <laughs> <laughs> Yo! Oh, I was definitely worth it. Now I understand. You Vulcan idiot cemented my car? Yeah. What the fuck would you do that for, man? You're a Vulcan idiot. So we can kick flip over it. Just do whatever the fuck you want like you do every time. What all did you do over the car gap? I've kick flipped this. Backside when 80 it. You 360 it. Scary because of this little yeah. pivot right there. Yeah. This is asphalt and concrete, and uh, looks like they've been doing some patchwork with bags. My brother just did this. Perfect. Whatever it takes. Ah, so a lot of people don't know this, but none of this was a parking lot. It was all grass. So the wellhead was in the middle of the yard. It was MTV when we were filming, we had so many people and so many trucks. We did like 30 cars a day I had to come in here because the township hated us. We had to get all the cars off the street. So we had to build this giant driveway to house all the trucks. Cause it's always rainy, it's always muddy, it's always a mess, especially in the winter with snow. So that's why it's all here. But we constantly have to have access to the wires and the plumbing 
for the wellhead to get water into the house. So a lot of people ask, like, what's the trough? What's that about? Water to the house. My uncle built something around it to make sure nobody backs into it because it would be a real pain in the We put the picnic table here too and we did some grinds That was it. fun. Oh, Jeff Rasp nose blunt at the picnic table. I was sick. What's the clip where you, you like take your shirt off and do a trick? Yeah. Oh, so I did the tail burn, whirly burn thing that I did right here. And then as soon as I stopped, my buddy, his car was right there. And I just turned around and grabbed the board and go, boom, planning on breaking his, his window, but it didn't break. It hit me in my head, which was even funnier. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I get. I really showed me. <laughs> You know, the one thing that you got to talk about whenever you talk about Bam Margera's backyard, all the shit that we've done, all the things we've broken, <laughs> all the people that have been here. I got Danny here from Fredo Filth. Helicopters landing, parties, Slayer. Oh yeah, Slayer's playing. I was a tour manager for years. You know, I was out on the road with Motley Crue way before Viva La Bam in the early 90s. Joe uh, DeVito, our great producer at the time of Viva La Bam, was also tour manager for Maroon 5. So there's two facts. And we looked at each other one night and we're like, we can get Slayer. And our other great friend, Tim Boris, he's the biggest metal agent on the planet, books all the big metal bands, Lamb of God, Danzig, et cetera. He made it happen. Slayer's coming tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tell him to come today. <laughs> we called Slayer and we're like, look, this show's on MTV. You can like tour and reach all these kids. We can also put you on a Sunday night show, make you the headliner in our TV show and put you in front of like three to four million kids that, you know, probably know who Slayer is, but aren't huge fans. Slayer's coming to town in 24 hours. And if you don't know who Slayer is, I suggest you go straight to the library and do some rock research because you're an idiot. Come play Bam's Backyard. We paid them $25,000, which at the time, I don't think you could get Slayer to play for less than like a hundred grand anywhere. But we convinced them. Slayer is here right now. They came, they had a good time. I think they played like five songs. The first day I moved into here, the neighbors didn't know who I was yet, but they gave me a cake and a housewarming party down at wherever that I didn't show up to. I had Slayer play it instead at midnight to the point where the jail a mile away, they were rattling the bars because they were so excited that they, they were hearing Slayer alive in real life. Like, so it was chaos. That was the best party I've ever <laughs> co-thrown with anybody. I think it's the only time Slayer's played anybody's backyard after like, you know, they actually had a record out. So right. that is an episode everybody should go back and watch. That was ridiculous. I was an absolute head, but I was obligated to film with MTV and I couldn't do two things at once. Probably should have knocked on the door and said, thanks for the cake and all, but I got to do. <laughs> what do you got to do? Oh, you know that death metal band Slayer? Yeah, yeah, they're playing at midnight. You're a <laughs> Slayer just rocked the house. Wasn't there another episode where uh, Mike V like took an ax to your truck or something? Isn't that Bam's homer? Yeah, that looks like Bam's truck. That's a few miles down. In fact, I just saw somebody in the airport the other day who asked me about that. Was that real? And Mike, I mean, they're real, man. That's an ax, an ax to my truck. Say, oh, oh, what the f***ing What about the f***ing Hummer? How's that feel, Vito? Yep, Mike V, uh, pretty clever dude. He has a lot of aggression. He's the perfect singer for Black Flag for yeah. a lot of aggression. Yeah, he took it out of my truck that day. That was a fun episode. Are you f***ing kidding me? Oh my God. <laughs> And then, of course, I got him back with an excavator and demolished the house. No, 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 hey, 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 no, ma'am. That's a fun one. If you go back and watch that episode, the safety guys at MTV, they were pissed. 
Ken Parks, rest his soul. He was a second in command in the legal team at Viacom. He hated me. He chewed me out for that. He's like, dude, you could have really seriously killed those guys. You know, huge lawsuit, et cetera. I was like, don't worry, we knew what we were doing. I don't know that we did. We just <laughs> did what we did. Also, Metal Militia came through, rode bikes through your house. Yeah. And that was gnarly because Brian Deegan, it was super windy out and he was supposed to do a backflip over Guar. And I said, if, dude, if it's too windy, just do a regular air, it's okay. She's like, nah, I wanna make this gnarly. I'm gonna go for it. Well, he did. Handlebar goes right into his stomach and he like ruptured his spleen so bad that they had to take it out. And I feel really bad. You know, he had to get surgery. He was in the Wilmington Hospital, Delaware for like two weeks straight. Jeez. It was very bad. Guar came to the castle. <laughs> Great friends of mine. I met those guys in 1993. I called them up, I was like, hey, here's what we wanna do. We're gonna have Mental Militia come out, do some jumps, we wanna have you play again. It was so easy. Like, we tell these bands, we're gonna put you on a TV show. And think about it, no YouTube, no TikTok, no Instagram. There was no other place for kids to watch. MTV was it. So you could get in front of millions of kids, guaranteed. You know, a band today, you know, they got a tour, they got to do all kinds of different things. So, Clutch, same thing. They played the snow episode where you guys were going down on all this Groundhog Day or something, yeah. So, a lot of people don't know this. Jack Flanagan, rest his soul, died of cancer, great dude. Jack managed CKY, Guar, and Clutch. So, yeah, we called him about the Poconos. Had him play up there at the Poconos. I pushed the whole bouncy castle down the slope with the four-wheeler. And then the next day when that one was done, we flew to film with the Dudesons in Mexico. And oh, yeah, I got yeah. pneumonia because I was outside working so hard and everything, building everything at the Poconos. And then we went straight into the summer and I got pneumonia and I missed a lot of that episode because I was just, I was in a hotel room for two Two days, and God bless Anna DeCosa for taking care of me, our line producer and great producer, one of the most talented people we've ever worked with. Uh, she worked with us. She, she was way above us. She took care of me, got me back to health. Uh, there's also been a lot of music videos shot here. Yeah. Anthony Green from Cirque to Survive just did a music video in the barn. Mains of Jenna, we filmed some with the pool party here. Viking skull. The time has come. Yeah, we filmed a lot of videos. Here. Yeah. Next thing you know, my skate barn was like a full blown studio. <laughs> oh, we had this whole yard, 18 hole miniature golf course. The amateur golf. The game is on. That was fun. You got stuck in a cherry picker somewhere. We're mapping out the golf course. Oh yeah, that cherry picker was down there. Yeah. And I don't know what happened, but we lost the keys to it somehow. And me and Ryan Dunn were forced to stay up there for six hours. Rab took him. Yeah, that's what we it was. Bonkers. The keys down here, you. Come on, Rab, don't be a <laughs> You'll get hysterical just sitting up in a cherry picker for six hours, not no wondering when anybody's gonna rescue you or save you or anything. <laughs> so it's just six hours. Like, guess we were cracking jokes and then went a bit bonkers from being up there. <laughs> yeah, that was. Funny. Um, and then I think finally you found out you could control it from the top and you just didn't even know. You're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> it goes up there, you just see the red button that says pull to start. You don't need the key for that. Are you Why would you have a key if it doesn't do anything? What was your favorite thing you guys did out here for the show? 100% Civil War reenactment. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, it's a war. Picture. 200 
fucking Yankees and 200 Rebels all here. This is the Mason Dixon line. Yeah, this is the Mason Dixon line. In tents with hay and campfires of violins. Do you guys even turn the lights out in, in the house? Yeah. Well, let's party like it's 1899 then. <laughs> Straight out of the Civil War, I felt like I was back in the 1700s. No This is 2004. I ain't playing no stupid little revolutionary games. Just because, I mean, that's that people buy tickets to to go to the Brandywine battlefield and they prepare for this for months or even years. So I arranged it. All because you found a cannonball in your yard. Right. <laughs> Fire in the hole! You will absolutely find artifacts if you dig, if you're going to dig a pool, if you're doing like major gardening in certain areas, you're gonna find things from the war. I live right over here the Brandywine Battlefield. I'm sure George Washington was walking through here at one point. We had a fence there and I think it was Dunn who uh, decided to take my Jeep one morning, drove it through the fence and like put me out of commission for a while on my Jeep. Can't have a Jeep in the Civil War, you don't make any sense. We're yeah. from the future. What's up with the paintings? I know that some of them have changed over the years, but yeah. these are hilarious. That's Ronald Reagan, it used to say Reagan, he's a f That's why, I don't know, it was funny to me at the time. I don't even think Reagan did anything wrong. <laughs> I'm just into it. Osama bin Laden just holding a 76ers basketball shirt, holding a basketball just to confuse you know, I have lawn care guys come over and people that clean the pool. I just like to see their reaction. Like, why does he have a Osama Bin Laden with a 76ers basketball jersey on? I'm like, makes me laugh. Didn't you have like Lance Bass or someone over here? Then I had Lance Bass because he had a whole bunch of press saying that he was going to the fucking moon or something with these Russians and he was doing classes and learning how to speak Russian only for it to fall through. So I figured it would be funny to re remind him that, you know, the spaceship left him behind. It never happened. <laughs> they painted one of the garage doors to look like the inside of the garage, but it was actually closed. He wants to race. Yeah, we'll race. Our first one back to the garage wins. No problem. That's when Dunn and I drove the, I think it was the limo. We drove yeah. the limo straight into the garage door. <laughs> Watch this. Oh, please do it. Yes. <laughs> oh, so you were in the limo when it crashed. Yeah, I think that made it into Viva La Bam. That it was did, one of yeah. the pranks they pulled on us. It's some Wiley Coyote <laughs> <laughs> so after I got the gnarly hipper on Nitro Circus, they asked me to get in the front of the van holding an American flag going 80 miles per hour off of a ramp into my neighbor's lake. And like an idiot, I agreed to do it. We hit that water so hard, I dislocated my shoulder and I couldn't unbuckle the seatbelt, and we were sinking, and I was panicking so bad. Like, if Street Bike Tommy didn't swim down and undo the seatbelt, I would not be here today to tell the story. I'm not joking. It was so jammed, and I couldn't move my arm, and I could not undo it. And he saw me struggling. That is so like, I really need to thank him for my life. You know, I really need to give credit where credit is due, and I can't remember the other guy's name, but he helped too. Um, and I had to swim to the side with one of my left hand geez. as this one was still out of socket. Yeah. I, I remember I didn't go have to go to the hospital because I think Travis knew how to pop it back into place. Nice. And he did. Yeah. <laughs> that was gnarly. Oh, dude, I dislocated my arm. So, this is my fourth Hummer. Why? Because I really liked having Hummers back in Viva La Bam days, but um, we wrecked them all. For one Viva La Bam episode, we gave Don Vito a budget to keep buying these really shitty cars. Vito's being a little baby, so we're gonna buy him a car. Just so I can destroy him. Oh, man, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Get stuff in there, man! You guys like ripped one into like a thousand pieces. Yeah.
strung one up in a tree. Hey Vito, you want your car down? <laughs> the total was eight, and I demolished each and every one of them. Man, why are you ruining the car, you dummy? Well, here's my steering wheel. I'll drive away like this. Okay, see you later. At that point, Don Vito was so fed up, he stole my Hummer. Where are you going, you fat Come here, go to hell, man. Things are just gonna go fast for you, kid. <laughs> Drove it to the nearest quarry. Kill it! Kill it! Hover! Get it out of here! Put a brake on that gas pedal on my brand new Hummer and drove it off a 600 foot quarry cliff. And I missed the car, and my Bentley SUV purple Bentiaga is in the shop right now with a alignment issue that's gonna take a while, so I needed this till that gets fixed. <laughs> One of your old Hummers, you like cut the roof off or Giant Oxville did? Hello, I'm Giant Oxville, and this is Bam's Hummer. <laughs> yeah, Knoxville showed up and woke me up. Is that Knoxville? What the f are you guys doing? Oops! By uh, sawing the Hummer into basically a convertible. <laughs> it looks horrible, oh, man. Oh my god. Did you like it at all? Or was no, it, it sucked. Yeah. It got rained on and everything. <laughs> the intro of Evil Bam, you guys were rocking out in there. I'm gonna give you what you need. Yeah. Like, that's a classic shot, all you guys. With a classic song. Yeah, Daniel Lyon. Daniel Lyon, I, the guitar player from him, aka Lily Laser. And uh, it's called King of Rock and Roll, which was the perfect song for the intro to Viva La Bam. <laughs> he came up to me one time, he's like, Thanks to you, I got paid from MTV more on that song than sometimes tours we did with him. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, it's got all new leather seats and uh, it's got a dope ass new system in it. That's all that matters to me. As long as I'm comfy, and I'm hearing a bumping ass system, all that matters. <laughs> all right, let's go down to the pool. <laughs> Didn't you have like a slip and slide from there to down yes. to the pool? Pool reader, no! I can't believe I live in this sick family! People would haul down and go down backwards and head first. I built a slipping slide, it came right down. Yeah. We put Visqueen, uh, you know, Plastic and Dawn, that all made it into Viva La Bam. That was fun. But the thing is, is that a lot of people jump off this into the pool, which is fine, but this one dude, I guess, did it in the morning, and then he, he got a little larried up and did it again at nighttime, and he dove right here into three feet of water, cracking oh his head open. Oh, God. So, yeah, he forgot that you have to do it down there. Luckily, he was okay. But when I took him to the hospital, like the nurse even had tears because she wasn't sure if she's gonna make it. I'm like, you're not supposed to show emotion if you're a nurse, you gotta keep your cool, but she couldn't. The famous thing about this pool that I remember, and I've been in the pool a couple times since, but I don't go in it a lot because I got strong memories. FHM Magazine, I'll never forget it because I still have a copy because I was in love with Jenny McCarthy. She was on the cover of FHM in the issue where they did a whole like spread on us, like four or five pages on us for Viva La Bam. And the photo shoot was done in the pool. So the photographer was willing to get in the pool, take a bunch of photos. It was supposed to be like a picnic. MTV built it as the Sunday stew. So they were like, let's do this food theme. We all dressed up in old school, like 50s bathing suits, even Vito. Brandon Novak stood on the edge of that diving board and pulled down his pants. And man, he was so constipated. Oh, it was the man. driest, chunkiest, like lumpiest poop I've ever <laughs> seen in my life, let alone come out of a human. And the photographer, it instantly when he saw it, it was about to drop, got out of the pool and he's like, I'm done shooting with you guys. You guys are too much. MTV is not paying me enough to do this photo shoot. I think I got what I need. And he like split off. Wow. He was Did you know that Novak took a dump in the pool? And I don't think anybody swam in it. That summer, we had to like get the pool guys to come out, which of course took like a month. Yeah. Did you build a big drop in? You like held an umbrella? I just kind of want to do it. We put it right there, and I had an umbrella, and I dropped in on it real quick. But before we repaved 
all this stuff. I did skate it once when it was empty. Got a fakie rock in that corner there. It's really steep, so you can't do much. Of course, you go over the light there. Barely any transitions at all. Down there, there is some pretty good ones. Did you guys dye the pool water green once? We dyed it green, it was St. Patrick's Day, of course, who wouldn't? <laughs> Why are you oh my God. Well, actually, I had two limousines that I fishtailed into the pool, and then I grabbed the other one and put the other limousine in the pool, too. We had some kayaks in there, and I think somebody drove an ATV in it as well. That's why I had to drain it all and repave everything, because it f***ed it up real bad. In the woods, you had the zip line, treetops, casino. Which direction was the treetops casino? The treetop casino was right down there, and I had a zip line from my bedroom all the way down to it. Oh, oh. Tree Four Casino. You cannot talk about Castle Bam without Tree Four Casino. That thing was giant, it was huge, it lived there forever. That was a ton of fun. A lot of people don't know, it was a major rainstorm when we built that. You couldn't even walk, let alone carry 1,000 pounds of, of lumber back there to build it. We flew in some pro wrestlers. Leatherface and Executioner. How was your fight? <sighs> that we would take from the zip line down to the wrestling mat. A whole wrestling ring. And then of course, you know, a deranged woman came and lived out of it for a while and uh, state cops chased her all around, I think naked. When the naked stalker showed up and started kissing my neck at 11 o'clock at night, I thought it was my girlfriend at the time, and I go, babe, we'll get to that later, I'm really tired. I look awake, see that she's sleeping facing this way, so when I turn up, I see the silhouette of this naked chick, and now when I turn on the light, she's down on the ground fingering herself, saying that the owl sent me from Jupiter. <laughs> so 911 calls. Finally, when the gate opens, she sees six cop cars with sirens. She does a naked cartwheel and runs into the woods. It took them seven hours to find her. Finally, they found her in the treetop casino, covering under eight blankets. And when they handcuffed her and took her away, they realized there was so much whittle carving in there with not just a marker. She whittled notes in the wood, which told me and the police that she's been living in there for months, which makes perfect sense because every time I'd have a buddy like you stay over and I'd say, yo man, you're the only one staying here. Did you eat my last slice of pizza? If you did, oh, that's okay. Yeah. But I just need to know who did it. You're like, dude, I swear it wasn't me. I'm like, I believe you. But if you didn't do it, who did? Casper the friendly ghost? Oh. It was her because my gate goes beep, 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 beep. She knows I'm leaving. That's her cue to run from the treetop right into my house because it's unlocked because the whole thing's gated anyway. Yeah. So it was her. That's gnarly. All those times. Yeah. Gosh. Jeez. Mega ramp thing was over there, right? Yeah, all that's there. And the pillars are still down there. It's overgrown, but in the wintertime, it just looks like a gravesite almost. <laughs> just all these cement poles. So when the mini mega ramp uh, contraption was finally built, it was about 25 feet wide on one side with a four foot animal chin ramp on the one side made out of bricks so you could grind down. The other side was a bit slanted and that was about seven feet tall with two eight foot extensions and then a, a flat part embankment. With a big death gap over the edge. Oh my God, it's scary with a 40 foot rolling, which was pretty much vertical, that led to a giant mega ramp with the rail and a ledge at the top. First thing we did, Tony Hawk showed up to try to do the death gap. He got it in about two tries. And then after that, I got it a couple tries later. <laughs> then Novak showed up. I don't even think I'm gonna get on the thing, man. Just fart. On pills or trying to get, but either way, it was coming off pills. Oh my God! You right? Ow. You right? Ow. Ow, dude, that was not even fun or nothing. Jumped off at the very top. 
breaking both ankles, but in the ambulance, he thought it was only one. So he's on his way to the hospital. He calls me on the ambulance. I'm like, it's broken, isn't it? He's like, not only is my white one broken, I broke my left one too. I'm like, figures. <laughs> Then Brent Ashley showed up when he was on Element and he did like this one-footed airwalk shit that was so incredible. So now we got this 40-foot rolling. If I fall naked, it's gonna hurt so bad. <laughs> what up? First day we started trying it, this dude, Delaware Adam, went down, got speed wobbles right when he hit the embankment and slammed so hard into the ledge with his ribs. Adam! I wouldn't be surprised if he was out for the entire summer for that. Once I got confidence, I started doing it switch. I did it a couple tries, enough to do a giant switch backside flip, which I was really stoked about. After that, I spent about two hours, maybe three hours, trying to nollie full cap flip. Finally got it, it was the ending trip. Down there on the seven foot part, that's where I learned the McUnit. If you don't know what that is, it's pretty much like a front side 540 indie grab. Then we started going up the thing. A lot of good skate footage on that ramp there, too. <laughs> Novak went down on a kayak. <laughs> and then he went down on a toilet. which was so gnarly because if you see, if he didn't have his helmet on, he hit his head so hard that if that helmet was not on, I don't even think he would be around today to tell the story. Oh, thank God for that helmet. And then we put on belt sanders and uh, went off the, the roll in there. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. He yeah. busted his head on that one. Hit it. <laughs> you just reminded me of something else. You guys put a pumpkin on his head and made him kayak down a ramp on your driveway. And that was my helmet. Here's my helmet, ladies and gentlemen. And then I think he dropped in on that ramp into some bushes. <laughs> oh, another thing is, I dropped in off the Indian wall into four drywall panels yeah. on Jackass 3.5. This is drywall drop-in. Yeah. Dude, it was so scary because as soon as the vert transition ends, it was just and I just closed my eyes and just let it take me to wherever it took me. On your big mega ramp, so conveniently set up a golden urinal just to piss in. Yeah. How did you come up with that? Because you could just go piss in the woods, but that's so much more convenient. When we were building that ramp, Carlos, who built FDR, he was living in the treetop casino with eight other people helping and a cat. So we got a urinal, put it right on the skate ramp, because there's no bathroom in there. Yeah. So that's what they used, and we just painted it gold. <laughs> Oh, uh, that actually reminds me of when you guys set up the pirate bar. It was so funny when you guys spray painted like Windex bottle gold. Brad paints Windex. A yeah. baseball glove. Yeah. <laughs> he just spray paints a baseball glove gold and it's a buried treasure. Brad, are you serious with this? The treetop casino has fallen to the ground and uh, I threw a bunch of gas on it, lighting on fire, never thinking ever that the wind would catch it to the ramp. And once it hit that ramp armor, it's like a rubber tire it does not go out the whole thing caught on fire and you can see black smoke from 40 miles away in philadelphia the tiny little bonfire that i planned on 
cooking some marshmallows, but it got way too out of control. The fire department showed up. They were going to give me an arson charge on my own property until I proved to them that it was an accident and my tree fort fell down. Yeah. Being bored one day, my buddy Head, who, you know, he always comes over unannounced. So I decided to make a whole bucket of up here and I was just sitting there and I could just grab a shoestring that was tied to the bucket. So, so oh, I'm going to get a soda, you need anything? You <laughs> and I poured the floor. It's a nice contraption. I wish it was still here. You got to be pretty balls to the wall brave to want to ollie off that and land right here as he bashed his head right there and, and tried it again. There's Adam Rebar, and he's gonna ollie down my stairs. There's not a lot of room. He tried it twice? He tried it four times. Jeez. I know. Yeah. That's 10 or 11 feet for sure. Yeah. I mean, the rail's steep, but it's such a precise ollie to land. A lot of crazy stuff happened in here. Didn't you guys fill it with bubbles once? Good memory. So we had one of those bubble machines yeah. to the point where there was so many bubbles, it was up to here and you couldn't even see your hand in front of you. The, this whole place, bubbles. <laughs> oh the whole house is full! Is he over there? Everybody get on the house! It was like a party. Who has this? Dude, Knoxville got us good. Then in the turret over there, we had a hot tub that I filled with Cheerios and milk. Oh. There's Fruit Loops, actually. What a mess! Deco put like all the plants. In what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is going on? Made it look like a rainforest. Because we went to Brazil and Di Camello hates to fly. So he's like, I'll just make my own Brazilian rainforest here. I'm not getting on that 17 hour flight. You guys. <laughs> Where's Dico? If you see him, he stays down here. He's loony. He, so he's lost scared. his mind. Is, where is he? This is right there. He's doing that. Oh my God. Look at this place. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. And then this is the pirate bar. Yeah, this was, yeah. And then at one point you just splattered paint everywhere. Painter. Uh, okay, so I've left out painter. Wait, what's paint on the back seat? What's that? Yes, I was on one and uh, <laughs> I had so much paint that I just <laughs> Jackson Pollock everything. Everything was every color known to man. Looked very good for photo shoots for magazines, but when you live here, it reminds yourself of North Philly crack hideout, and it, <laughs> I had to get it painted and sanded eventually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably give you a headache sometimes to look at. Yeah. The layout used to be different when we would watch the show. I yeah. think you guys redid some of the walls in here. Yeah. The turrets back there, huh? Yeah. And that's where you guys put the cereal in. Yeah. Damn, this is top view of that ollie. Yeah. Yeah, he had his head on the wood. Yeah, right there. So what, Jeez, on the second dude. try, he just slowed down and ollied harder? Yeah. He just went over like right here. And he was regular footed. Oh. Wow. That's Which, even To me, scary. makes it more difficult. Yeah. yeah. I'm staying in this room down here. They did radio BAM in it. Did you build a half pipe in there too at one point? Aren't you sick of half pipes? Hell no, I'm a skater. We built a ramp in it and it became a bed. And a lot of people slept in there. It's a makeout shack too. Mm -hmm. We built the ramp in there. And then eventually that became the studio for Radio Bam. We don't have to go back down there, but you did Radio Bam in that corner room. We didn't down there, about that. 300 episodes of Radio Bam. Oh yeah, f yeah. Radio Bam Series 28 Faction. I puked red white into the bathroom. I want to play CKY dressed yeah. in decay. Yeah, we did a lot. Yeah. To the point where like, I just had to take a break. I got really burnt out. Floor two. Well, what all has gone down? Well, just because you guys are playing pool right now. It... I just shoot it like that and then. Ah! Ah! Use the it reminds me of uh, Maniac Pool. <laughs> Maniac too. Maniac too. Oh, no.
nuts. No, like, there's no rules in Maniac 2. Secretly shoot for glow in the triangle of balls. It was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> it happened. Whoa! Uh, but we used to have a rope swing here, and many people, they swing down into the uh, knight in shining armor thing. <laughs> that are now outside. The knight of armor, why did you have that? I think I saw it was at your old house. In downtown Westchester, on Gay and High Street, there was an antique store that was selling these knight in shining armors. And it looks really heavy, but it's just made out of aluminum, and they're only $400 a pop, so I bought like seven of them or eight of them. Most of them got destroyed. But you still got two. Yeah, I still yeah. got two. You could see them in CKY4, Haggard. It was in the uh, episode of season one where you turned the house into a castle. You did the drawbridge. <laughs> this isn't good, man. Yeah. You have a lot of memorabilia still. When I was at your house, I saw the pirate bar sign. You still have that. I think you have yeah. a fat boy face off wheel. Actually, when I took a peek in the Hobbit hole, I have a signed Billy Idol acoustic guitar a signed Mirror Flying V guitar by Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top, Cradle of Filth, him, signed guitars, Iggy Pop. Hey, wake up, you guys. <laughs> wake up. <laughs> Which played at the wedding. We've had a lot of good wake up pranks at Castle Bam. We got these wild crabs and we're gonna go wake up rake with them. <laughs> My uncle Schipper got woken up by a whole bunch of snow we ordered from the Poconos. Oh. Wake up, Schipper! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Where the hell did you get snow from? I ordered snow from the Poconos. Oh, oh. You did a drop kick to like body slam on Dunn and you put a hole in the wall. See, now that's not good. A tandem wake up starring Phil and Don Vito. Tandem wake up, you know what that is. No? Well, it's a cornucopia of pleasurable fun synchronized with another wake up for everyone to enjoy. Oh boy. Broke a lamp over Novak's head, waking him up. <laughs> On the Viva La Bam Mardi Gras episode. I did get woken up by Tim O'Connor and Tony Hawk with an air horn, and then they gave me a wedgie. That was seriously the worst I've ever woken up in my entire life. Didn't someone do a burnout here to wake you up? Yeah, so Dunn shows up at six in the morning with his crotch rocket speed bike and I'm like, what the f do I wake up there where I was staying? Come out, there's all these sharp tacks that Knoxville put on the ground. You guys had a raven here once.
A what? A rave. We did, we raved till dawn. You put a bounce house up there? Yes. You guys jumped from the balcony into that? Bam! Food fight. Let the foods fly! Put Novak in a Christmas box, pushed him down the stairs. <laughs> Wait, oh, <damn. laughs> oh my God. I went down on an igloo cooler. You also drug a huge Christmas tree through your living room to put up. Well, I mean, I got a 50-foot roof, you know? Like, you need a big Christmas tree, <laughs> right? <laughs> there we go. That one's good, that one's good. pretty good, big. Your mom would always get pissed at all that. She asked you to clean up the living room and you used lawn equipment. <laughs> we had some pirate fights in there. Yeah! Wasn't there a scene in like Viva Lamb where you guys are like sticking your head out the window here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was. Hey! There's a whole army out hey. here! What are you doing now? We got the Yankees and the Rebels. Hey, do Tense. you want them to come through the house? The main room! Alright, oh, come oh on in, God. I guess. Enough of this jibber jabber, let them in. Main bedroom here. Okay, what's the story with the hardogram? How'd you get that? Who made it? This is made by Seth Meisterman. It was for the Buried Alive by Love video that we did in Los Angeles back in 2000. At the time, I, I only had like street creds of skate videos. So, you know, th this music video was over a hundred thousand dollar budget. So they're like, you're 20 years old and the only creds that you have is making skate videos. How do we know you can make a music video? I was like, it. I'll just pay for it myself, and if you guys like it, then you can buy it off me. So I got Juliet Lewis in it, thanks to Steve Barra. It was a number one hit. It won an award for best rock music video in England for Kerrang. So after that, they ordered three other music videos, The Sacrament and Love Said No, Solitary Man, which we did two of them in Philly, the other one in Czech Republic now in Prague, a mansion called Litomir's. And then I remember you uh, did no slide on a big screen TV up here. What did you do to the television set? I'm trying to no slide. It's all crap! I think it was the opening for Viva La Bam, but it, yeah. it actually was a lot harder than I thought because it was really high up to get on and, and you had no runway to, to land it really, so I slammed right into the wall when I was done. Let's look at your boards. Tell us some of your favorite graphics. Well, name any other skater besides me who has 400 BAM decks. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Uh, there's probably a super fan out there that has them. No, but name any pro skateboarder that has oh. this many decks. Yeah. Because of Element, we made so many graphics. That. Like, fans really like collecting them. And to tell you the truth, all the pink ones and purple ones that have autograms, it was mostly 15-year-old girls that just wanted to buy it and hang it on their wall <laughs> as art. So, I love this one. Oh, yeah. And this dude from Florida just made that Phoenix and then that me. So, he photoshopped our faces, oh, no which is rad. Yeah. I rode this one a lot. I remember having that one. This is one of the newer ones with heart supply, I like. Kat Von D did a series of three on these. That's one, that's one. I don't know why they're not together. This angel wing turns into the other one when you put them all together. That one sold the most with Element. Yeah, for sure. And that was my first board ever with Toy Machine in 1997. It's everybody's haircut that is a mullet, so 
that one right there, that's Abdenel, aka Caveman, and he has a, f a 1090, that Art Webb has a 397, still Fremont, aka Dave Fairman, he has an official 0100. No, that's Danny up there, see? Zero on top, 100% in the back. <laughs> and then that's the hockey cut starring Chris Rath. So obviously you know that I just told Element, I want everything to be dark with either purple or gray with bats. I don't care if it's a wombat or a regular bat or a spooky looking tree. <laughs> Even though I hate snakes in real life, I like the way they look, so you'll probably see some there. Oh, Adam Wallach did this one. This one, Kat Von D drew and then she tattooed it on me. Love this one. With this tattoo, you know, it went all the way to his elbow. It looks awesome. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. This one is the tattoo of my ribs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. With the element sign. More bats, more spooky sh That one got covered in paint probably when I was all Larry the f up on a bender one day. <laughs> Love this one. Yeah, that one's awesome. Yeah, that one's sick. This one's another classic for sure. Yeah. Well, that's kind of resembles the tattoo without my face there. Yeah. The only one that isn't a BAM deck is Tony Hawk. That was my first signboard ever when I was 13 years old. No way. Yeah, which I'll tell you a story. After he shredded the demo at Prospect Park, I waited three hours in line. He goes, you were the kid ripping at the demo. Takes off his sweaty shirt, I wanted to squeeze it and drink it. I was so excited. But then <laughs> Nottis came the next year and I did the same thing, waited three hours in line and I said, Hey, Natus, could I have a Natus sticker? He goes, my name's not, it's not Natus, now be the kid. I'm like, I just waited three hours for this, f you. It really affected me. I'm 44 years old. We made up in, in 2000, but um, when he got on Element for guest deck, but I had to tell him that story. I'm like, you really affected me. I was, if we didn't make up like this now, I'd still be at 44 years old being like, that mother <laughs> Where was the uh, mini ramp on this part back here? Right here. And you put uh, your mom's car up here once as a prank. How did you get the car on the deck? We needed music. That's not even possible. Yes, her uh, PT Loser, yeah. aka PT Cruiser, we put that up here on a forklift. She's <laughs> like, I need to get to work. I'm like, good luck. <laughs> Deco had like a fire hose on the balcony and he pranked your dad. Oh, what the hell? I just talked to Bam. He's at the waterfalls in Brazil. You're at the waterfalls here. You guys set up a slingshot, sling stuff at Vito. <laughs> Remember we skated this couch and you were sitting in it? Yeah. I saw some video of some dude kayaking down the stairs. Yeah, Red drew, Mohawk. Like, we should actually call him up. Oh, Barback went off this on the garage roof and landed on a glass coffee table and just ate into it. No way. <laughs> Yo, we're filming with the Dern Brothers, a documentary. Didn't you go down that thing right there in a kayak and you thought it was the water challenge, but it was actually just... Yeah, it's on your YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Not only was it just... It was golf balls. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we have a lot of enough people in here that you could fill up a whole big thing of in a day. Oh, right. <laughs> Why does it smell like pee? Rake went down also. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then you went down backwards. <laughs> Remember Don Vito goes, Bam, what the fuck you have two Lamborghinis for? You could get 40 Hyundais instead. I'm like, I don't want a fucking Hyundai and I don't want 40 of them neither. I want two Lamborghinis. But you can get 40 Hyundais instead. What's wrong with you? <laughs> what the fuck would I do with 40 Hondas? <laughs> All right, we're gonna get back to the documentary. Do you think MTV at the beginning uh, was more lenient with all the rules they laid on you or did they start making up rules? Cause I know the town definitely started making up rules. A violation. Well, yeah, there's, there's two different things. So MTV is a huge corporation, right? And, 
you know, a lot of liability. When you're putting this stuff on broadcast TV, you know, somebody repeats and tries to do something they saw on TV, well, the people who did it can have some liability. So they have what they call standards and practices, the things you cannot do. Can't poop on TV, can't pee on TV. You know, some things you can blur, literally physically blur in the camera, but MTV just, they sucked at the time, man. Ken Parks ended up being a great partner. Again, second in command at legal there at the time, but they would rubber stamp and block a lot of things we wanted to do. And they started to tell us, you know, we needed to tell them the pranks we were gonna pull ahead of time so they could approve them so that they would like, you know, feel like their budgets for the camera and everyone there to film them would actually be viable. Saying it. <laughs> we flashed a big bird to some of those and we did the things we wanted. They never made it into the show. That footage is still there. Like Bam can still do with it and we probably should. Yeah, to your point, standards and practices, I want to say was just over 200 pages long at the time. A printed book of things you couldn't do and every producer had to have that book on set. Hey, can we do that? No, it's in the book. By the time we were done in three years, five seasons of Viva La Bam, along with Travis Barker and Wild Boys, you know, the, I think it was over 700 pages in three years. All the shit you couldn't do. Couldn't sit on a toilet. Man? Hello? There's no toilets in the house anymore. What happened? We did a little skate park half pipe, me and Ryan Dunn, in front of a hardware store in an episode. And inside, when we were looking for tools and and supplies to put inside the concrete or the ramp, just like we did the skate park driveway. Ryan Dunn sat on a toilet with his pants down, but his underwear on. He sat on the toilet and he had a plunger and he said, Glom, I got an idea. And he like stuck it to his head and that got cut because MTV's legal said, you can't show somebody sitting on a toilet on TV. And we're like, he's got his underwear on. He's in boxers. They're like, what the f That's when we knew like, all right, this is a limited run, man. There's gonna be some things that we wanna do that we're just not gonna be able to do and we're gonna to have to like PG it up. And that's why after five seasons, MTV wanted more seasons. We all looked at each other and we're like, we're not doing it because it's gonna be bubblegum pop. So that's, that's why Viva La Bam ended, really. Yes, we draw to a close of Viva La Bam. Well, it was a joyous occasion. Oh, oh, shit. oh my God. <laughs> You grind rails all the time and you can't even walk down one? That's <laughs> yeah, like that? Bob Burnquist when we were do, trying to loop at his house, his phone was down there ringing and I was down there. I'm like, your phone's ringing, who is it? It was somebody important and he's like, F it. So he just does the loop. I'm like, it was easier for you to do the loop to get your phone than to just slide down the thing on your ass. All right. <laughs> so now we all know that Kanan could actually grind this if it was made of metal, but he can't even walk down the <laughs> thing. <laughs> Yeah, we all stumbled here and there. <laughs> There's like a video I, that Bam showed me where you guys like rammed a car into an apartment and you hurt your <sighs> knee. Was that for Viva La Bam originally or was no, that? No, no. All right, so here's the story. We pushed a minivan into a condo complex with Bam's Hummer. The first season was done. They sent a camera crew to Bam's old house, not this house, and they wanted to create the promos, all the commercial spots to promote the new season. The good news was everybody who made the show, all the TV producers, the cameraman, the audio, the grips, the safety guys, they didn't have to work. So we invited all them to a Mexican fiesta in Bam's backyard. And literally everyone was allowed to drink because they were not working, they were just friends. So we did some things. Bam and I did a dual run on his half pipe. He did a frontside air over me doing a, a frontside grind with a beer in my hand. Um, it was a total fun day, but everybody got trashed. Bruce, he got super drunk. He was living, you know, MTV puts all the crew up in these apartment complexes. You're here for like two months. So they rent these apartments for you. He got home and he was this all day during the shoot. We were just pissed. He just was like throwing at us and being a drunk, which we get it. It's cool. We're the same. Huh. We decided to stop by Bruce's and to pull a prank on him. Well, it turns out Bruce's car was parked right in front of his apartment, minivan. We did not know, honest to God, swear, swear to God, my kids' lives. We did not know Bruce was right inside the slider door, passed out, drunk on the couch. I got out and, and was like saying, yeah, come on up. We were gonna push the car up into the condo. <laughs> I got on top of the Hummer, Dunn got on the parking block and just needed to gun it to get over it. And as soon as he did that, I fell off, lost my balance. I landed right on my knee on the parking block, on the edge. I thought I broke my knee. I'm on the ground. 
they keep pushing the car, it goes in, it smashes, the car ends up in the living room, smashes through the side of glass windows. What we didn't know is Bruce was right there on the couch. We take off, we all get in the Hummer, we take off, find out a couple hours later, police are looking for us, obviously, they knew it was us. People came out, heard it, saw the Hummer. Bam was the only in Westchester with a Hummer at the time, especially that color. We found out later that when the cops got on scene, they thought Bruce came back drunk driving, drove over the parking block and right into his own apartment because he was inside going, what the f just happened? So I think the rumor is they put him in handcuffs thinking he came home drunk driving because he was wasted. <laughs> He's going to wake up tomorrow and just be like, what the f <laughs> <laughs> Turns out, you know, witnesses and everything, like, no, Hummer pushed it in, but Bruce was pissed at us for a long, uh -huh. long time. I bet. Rightfully so. I just shoved his car through his window. He didn't even wake up. Dude, he didn't wake up. He didn't wake up. And how about Brent Hines from Mastodon? He shows up just to kick it and he's hitting golf balls out here and he couldn't hit it right after three tries and he gets so frustrated and tries to hit my camera but he hits my arm instead and breaks my wrist. <laughs> oh, mother. I saw a few months ago, you finally got the whirly bird on the hip in there. Yeah. You got the make. You know, mostly Carlos, who built FDR, has done a lot of things. He's done the whole barn contraption, which I've redone, no kidding, five times, usually spending 100 to 150 grand to build it and then when I am over it, I have to take it down for 40 grand and then do it again, take it down for 40 grand. So we finally built something that we all like down there. But you know, when I was all hopped up on whiskey and Adderall, I'm like, we need a fucking loop. Ah! And we need this weird thing. And I figured out that when you do the loop, you have done the loop. Congratulations. You can't crooked grind the loop. You can't make twist it. You're done. So tear it the down, build new. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Welcome to the Castle Bam Skate Barn. Run number one, straight out the gate. Not even warmed up. Yeah! Yeah! Oh! Do it! Oh! Oh, you got sabboed by your own brother! No warm up. You would have done it. Don dropped in on this the other night. To go where? <laughs> hey Bam, did anyone ever land the vert wall drop in? I know somebody dropped in at eight mega sh But then I think somebody showed up a month later and actually did it. Send it! Mikey Levin, he rips it. He lives in Quaker Town. Ben Hatchell came here and killed it. And then Jeff Rasp is just a local ripper. Uh, Rasp like did something weird on the skinny part right there. So the coolest thing I've ever seen was so original that Rasp came up, fakey rock on the corner of that, and then spun around like a like it's a back lip, and then came back in. It was just so cool and original, and it was actually first try. Yes. I was like, have you ever done that anywhere else? He's like, no, it was a total accident. Jake Daney comes here from Allentown. He's got laser flips on lockdown. That's a real tr weird trick to have just on yeah. lock. Yes! He does a lot of weird like airwalk combos. Yeah. Oh, Beaver Fleming, backflip to the ear. Wow. Wait, over, over the spine? Yeah. How? Yeah. Like, I'd be so scared to just land back on the spine. That's why he's in the Nitro Circus. Out of everything that went down here, 
Your personal favorites. My personal favorites, I'll get down a quick list real quick. Slayer, gotta go watch that episode. That was absolutely amazing. The Bubble Party. We put the hot tub in the turret on the ground level and we filled it with milk and Fruit Loops. That was a ton of fun. The skating that happened here on the driveway was great. Getting all that stuff from Motley Crue and Tommy Lee. There, there's so many. You can go back and watch Viva La Bam and uh, everything we did was fun. It, that's why we did it, it was fun. Can't do that shit anymore, man. Nobody's gonna give you money to just go wreck a house and give you a million dollars to go fly to Brazil with Bob Burnquist and wreck the rainforest or build a ramp in a house and, and skate it. So um, for you kids that aren't quite sure, go back and watch it. I think it's on iTunes, five seasons of Viva La Bam. Go watch it, it was, it was a ton of fun. You'll never see shit like that ever again anymore. So there you have it, there's the tour of Castle Bam. It's starting to rain, so if we're gonna do any shredding today with the Durham brothers, it's gonna be in the barn. Welcome to FDR. I used to be able to skate this place with my eyes closed. Oh, hell no! Welcome to the Dust Bowl. When I turned six and first found a skateboard, I found this place in King of Prussia. What was that? Coming soon for Dern Bros members, raw and extended cut interviews. And out now, the uncensored version of this video featuring extra history too extreme for YouTube. So he opens up the door to... <laughs> I remember there being a human stew on that ramp. He goes up on the...